Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahadhatin abada ala ni'amillahi wa afdalihi. Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah wa 'allimna min ladunka 'ilma. Subhanaka la 'ilma lana. إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوين التعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه وثوابه Subhanahu wa ta'ala Ma'a nutfin wa afiyatin Birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma Inna nas'aluka al-alma ladunni Wa mashaba safi al-hani Ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma Inna nas'aluka al-alma ladunni Wa mashaba safi al-hani Ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma Inna nas'aluka al-alma ladunni Wa mashaba safi al-hani يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما فقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا رحم رحيم اللهم إنا نسألك فهما نبين وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إن نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأ ما ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا بذلبات الوهم وفتح لنا أباب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه رجع العمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقد من لساني يفقه قولي وسد لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك, وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال إخاص الصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر وحفظ ونفع والانتفاع وخير الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الفاتحة Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah We are continuing with our um, session InsyaAllah Okay uh, Bismillah So today um, uh, Where's everybody? <laughs> Anyone on the videos? Okay Alhamdulillah Okay Keep yourselves uh, Videos on eh So Tak ada orang tu Okay um, um, Okay Bismillahirrahmanirrahim We are continuing with our um, we continue with our uh, uh, discussion, right? So just to bring you through an overview, lah, you know, of what has been done. There's only been thirty-two slides, right? But it's been I know very very deep discussions, um, on this platform, lah. Alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. 
um, and also it, um, to, to do that by myself. So as I and nobody around, nobody around me, <laughs> so my husband. Um, and I've been having a lot of discussions with him also, lah, you know, with regards to this uh, topic specifically. Um, a lot of thought lah put into it, and I hope that you all also putting a lot of thought, you know, into it, um, in, in into this, you know, um, and and not living our lives blind, you know, and influenced, um, and basically being like being like. Um, uh, being being brainwashed or being mind controlled right, by what's going on around us, and I hope you all do all do all see the video that I sent out um, on the WhatsApp. Do you all see the video on the six steps um, by which uh, to have LGBT embraced by the Muslims? Um, it is as a you all didn't see you all didn't see the do you all did you all um, um, get the video? <laughs> do you all get the video? No, should I? Should we actually play the video? The video is a very short video. Let me see if I can open up my WhatsApp. Actually, in fact, you can. Um, this this methodology is is used for a lot of things. It's not just LGBT. It's it's, it's a it's a common methodology to um, to introduce evil into society to make evil mainstream in society. Right, so let me just um give me well uh, wait for my my WhatsApp to. Okay, while well, I wait for my WhatsApp to um, load, I will just go through the overview of this entire course. Right? And if you, can, if, you can, if you want to share it with other people, you can share it with other people. Um, and and, and uh, uh, this, is, this, is, this is basically um, spreading, lah, spreading the news so as to this is how we, we, this is how we fight shar, this is how we fight evil. Right? We fight evil by making people aware of evil. You know, subhanAllah. Um, the video is not long. <laughs> Someone said the video is long. It's not. It's not long. But I think. I think since we began. I be, since we began, um, the entire series with a video <laughs> of of um, Sayyidina Malik bin Dinar. You know, with regards to the soul. And I actually want to go through the entire um, the whole thing lah to con- to, to, to to come to, to to basically to wrap up everything um, nicely. And also any parts or any concepts that have been um, that basically was not. Uh, let me see. Eh? Any any concepts that were not um, understood well enough, I can be clarified. Okay, let me just um, do a new share. Okay, can you all see it? Okay, so this time we actually mentioned this um, early on uh, with regards to all forms of evil. Not just LGBT. LGBT is one example. It's just one example. I, it's, it has been our case study for quite some time because it's right now um, you know, in, in the public sphere. Uh, it's basically the, the, the thing like, going on right now. But this has been going on with all forms of evil um, from, uh, from, from, from open living together. Right? I mean, um, uh, basically prom- promiscuity. Right, this has happened a long time ago, <laughs> right? So people not being married, 
right, and being together, um, and living together. Right? So even under heterosexuals, under heterosexuals, Islam, alhamdulillah, Islam is highly, highly moral. Right? Of course, <laughs> because everything that is good, our Prophet Sallallahu pointed us to. Everything that is evil, he warned us against. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So the morality in Islam is very high. Right, so um, they have destroyed this, and this is from a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whereby he said that Islam will be destroyed strand by strand. Right, they're going to come and they're going to pull Islam strand by strand from the individual and from society. Right, so so um, from things like like modesty, right, things like um, uh, uh, sexuality, right, things like violence, right, things like um, even. Um, atheism, right? Things like e- every form of evil. This methodology, is he, this guy is speaking about. Okay, this speaker. Okay, I've not checked him out. Okay, um, but my husband knows something about him. Um, I have not ch- checked him out. Right. So, but going to my husband, um, this, they, 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 like, um, uh, is he's not someone that I follow, <laughs> or I would follow, right? But this video, particular, particularly, he's pointing out some very good points. All right, so but I'm not. I I can't give a fair assessment of the speaker himself, lah, right? because I've not I've not checked him out yet. All right, so, but I'm just saying that um, if you if you all do Google who he is and whatsoever, um, don't 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 think that I am promoting the speaker, okay? Because I don't know anything about the person, all right. But what I've what I've seen is the video, <laughs> and that's all I've seen. All right, because uh, but my husband has uh, my husband knows a lot more than than me <laughs> about all these things. All right, so he has he checked out he checks out speakers and their profiles, all right, and their and their um and their education education uh, background and also their ide- their ideology, all right? Because sometimes when it, especially when it comes to evil, right, many parts of society, not just the Muslims, right, are, they are all against evil. You know, even from Christian um, sources, you find very good sources. You know, of the Christians speaking up, right? Because it's also attacking them, right? Evil is attacking all religion, <laughs> and it is, it is basically the mainstreaming is is mainstream evil, It's mainstream evil. That is actually this brings us to the and Alhamdulillah, very very beautifully, Allah has you know arranged this entire session, this entire series, because it actually brings us to the end of our of of, of the of the of the heading of this entire series, which is a savage world. Right? It's a savage world out there. I right, we began the series speaking about salvaging the soul. Right, we spoke about the soul in depth right, in the in the beginning of the series, and then we went through it. Right, and we um, you know ex, uh, uh, exposed the savageness of the world. Right, so this, so why is it savage? Right, as as our Prophet Sallallahu has informed us, right, it is because of confusion of making evil good and good evil. Right, we've heard this since we were young. We heard about how the jail will come and the jail will make good evil and evil good. Right, and, and right now we're seeing this manifest in our very eyes. We're seeing this in, in the past 20 years. Eh, very, very, very quick. It was 30 years. 20, 20, 20 years when I was young, what was considered to be, and some of you here are much older than me, what was considered to be evil when you were young, right now in your, in your, in your lifetime, in your lifetime you're seeing the very same things. That was completely unaccepted in, in society, now embraced, and now to the point whereby anyone who speaks up against it, they are the criminals. In, in your lifetime, eh? in your lifetime, this has happened. Right? It's, it's so scary that if it has happened in our own lifetime, what's going to happen in the future? Right? And which is why it is so urgent right now what we're doing, I mean, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, you know, with this, with, this, with this entire series. It's so urgent right now to wake up the Muslims. <laughs> wake up, right? Stop consuming. Stop it, right? Stop consuming the toxins. Right? And stop feeding your family these toxins, right? Because, because it's just going to get worse. It's going to get so bad. I, that is going to be so difficult. As Rasulullah said, the hadith will come to hold on to the religions that are holding on to hot coal. Uh, it's only, only, only the strongest of the strong can hold on. Uh, because you, you, there, has to be con- there has to be complete intent, uh, to complete belief uh, in this religion to hold on. Uh, so if someone does not have that, very easily they will say, why am I even trying? You know, and then they will just let go there's no point trying. Let's let go of vision altogether. We don't want, you know, we don't want our descendants, you know, because we're in, we're, we're, we are right now a, a generation 
right? Whereby we're at the crossroads because our parents' generation or our grandparents' generation, they were hit by it first. Right? We, we, are, we, we, are, we are basically coming out of a generation that were, they were hit by what they had no idea they were hit by. Uh, so they were caught off guard. Eh? Our parents or grandparents, they were caught off guard. They didn't know what it was. Our generation, we went through it. We saw it. Right? We saw what we went through in education. We saw what we went through with, with um, society. We saw, we, went through, we saw a lot of things. In our generation, music and, and movies and everything. We, we saw it. We saw it. Right? And now, Allah has given us the, 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 the knowledge. Right? Allah has given us the experience of going through evil. Most of us, did, we went through it. Eh? We went through the evil. Right? And, then, and then choosing to throw that out of our lives. Right? Choosing. Eh? After, after having gone through and consuming all that we consumed when we were young. And I know a lot of us here, we did that. We consumed a lot of evil when we were young. Right? And now, we're throwing it out of our lives. And we don't want that for our children. Right? We don't want that for the next generation. Right? So, 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 so right now, it's, it's, it's urgent. Lah. It's urgent because it's going to get more and more toxic. It's going to get um, uh, more and more detrimental right? and, 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 uh, and destructive right? on human beings as a whole, human society as a whole. Eh? Okay, so the first thing is, um, of course, as we mentioned from the beginning of the series, right? um, the, the voice of evil will be as loud as possible. Right? It's going to be everywhere blasting. Um, uh, so as to make it normal. Uh, so you shout something loud. Remember in the beginning of the, of the series, if you shout something loud enough, people believe it. Right? So just remember that this was actually extended over all forms of evil, right? So even um, of course, of course, at the core of it, right, more serious than than LGBT actually is akida, right? Akida is more serious because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, right, a Muslim gay person can be forgiven, right? We know that we know Allah's mercy extends over the worst sinners. It's possible if someone dies, and is in the worst of sin. Even if he's a murderer. I even know the story of, of, of the one who killed 100 people in the hadith. But repentant. Repentant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if someone were to die non-repentant, uh, the shafa'ah of Rasulullah s.a.w. can come for them. Right? As he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shafa'ati li alika ba'iri li amin ummati. Right? My shafa'ah are for the major sinners in my ummah. For as long as they keep themselves Muslim. Right? As long as they keep themselves Muslim. Forgiveness is open for them. And shaitan is not unaware of this. Now, he knows how Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness extends over even the worst of Muslims. It does. Even if they die in the, in the terrible sin that they, they, they are in, even if they die in that way, as long as they die with the shahada in their heart, right, there's a possibility of them being forgiven on the Year of Judgment. Right, shafa'at al uzma right, the great shafa'ah of Rasulullah for Ahlil Kabair. I mean, for, for, the, for the worst sinners in society, amongst the, amongst the Muslims, all right? So while a lot of us here, I mean, you're, you're shocked by the LGBT thing, and we're shocked by all this, you know what's more serious? Right? What's more serious are our young losing their faith, right? It's in the hadith of Rasulullah Islam, right? Uh, it was the end of time. Um, uh, people will, uh, it was towards the end of time. A person will come to the morning as a believer, come to the evening a disbeliever. They ca- or a person will be in the evening a disbeliever, come to the morning, a, a, come to the evening a believer, come to the morning a disbeliever. They sell their religion for some measly gain of this dunya. And it's a hadith. And Sadaqah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're seeing it happen in, our, in front of our very eyes. That people are throwing away their religion. Right, and this is and so, so this is why it is how severe it is. Right? the whole thing of games, the whole thing of music, the whole thing of um, uh, movies, the whole thing of 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 uh, TV, right? the whole thing, wh- whatever that we've been speaking about in this entire series, 
don't take this lightly. We're talking about a person's salvation. The salvation of the soul is on your aqidah. It's on your aqidah. Right? It's, it's al Habib Umar. I know I shared the, 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 um, the, the poster earlier on. Like he said that, that, that all these things that you're giving your children, right, that, that the society is giving their children, is destroying their belief, like cutting through their creed, like cutting through their aqidah. This is more serious. This is more serious than even in LGBT. So, so, so how you see LGBT, how you see sexual promiscuity, how you see all these things, these are still kabair. It's not kufr. Okay? So as Muslims... As Muslims, like kufr is a, is 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 is, is basically a dead end. Kufr is a dead end, right? So if someone dies on other than La ilaha illallah, then our akida is that the door of Tauba is the, the, the door of not Tauba, but he has died, right? The door of Shafaa, the door of intercession of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is shut. On that person, the Prophet cannot help that person on a day of judgment. And there's a more serious thing, right? So, so as you watch through this, right, people's aqidah, right? And you know this is how shaitan works. Shaitan goes through sins. He goes through sins from, from what he will convince us to be small sins, right? Like watching something on your phone, you know, seeing something, hearing something. These are the small sins. Shaitan brings that first, right? Then he customizes the heart to disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does that, right? And then he introduces larger sins, bigger sins. And then he enters from the big sins into, he enters the door of despair, right? And he convinces the person that you're committing major sins. There's no points and there's no hope for you. There's no place for you in Islam. Get out. Right? That's how shaitan works. That's how shaitan works, eh? Right? So, and, and, and you see, of course, with LGBT, what is, what is more serious than LGBT is leaving the prayer. Right? Leaving the prayer already is more serious. Right, so, so you see as how as we are alarmed by this eh, and horrified and disgusted, right? Salat has, has been attacked a uh, long time ago. A long time ago, Shaitan has attacked Salat a long time ago. Right? And it's why majority of the Muslims in this world, the majority of the Muslims in this world do not pray five times a day. Right? And it's from there that he attacks the Aqidah of the Muslims and pull and drags them out of Islam. Right? Pulls them out. And from there, that's how Shaitan stamps his, um, his mark on the person saying, this soul is mine in the hellfire. Because that was his vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the Quran. Right? In the Quran, when Allah threw him out of, 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 of paradise, right? he said that, For I will, sh-, you know, you, you mark my words, I will surely bring them with me, every one of them. Right? The, 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 the human beings, every one of them. I will come from their front and I'll come from their back and I'll come from their left and I'll come from their right and I come from the and, 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 and you'll find most of them ungrateful. Right? And then uh, inshallah I'll go into the part about gratitude in a while. Eh? That's part of one of our solutions because Shaitan himself pointed us to it. <laughs> in the Quran, Shaitan actually tells us the solution. You'll find most of them not grateful. Right? Meaning that the solution that the block against Shaitan is to be grateful. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes to the to the to the to the, to the, to the side of, of, of ingratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I know I know it's a long video, but I, I really want to just I, I, I think it's a very good summarizing video of what we have been doing this past um, December, inshallah. And you can forward the video live if you want to follow the video.
Okay, that, that number point number two, right? Okay, this one is extended also into feminism. It's, ex- it's basically everything. Lah. What evil does is that evil puts themselves at a compromised position. So you will feel compelled to protect evil. Right? Because who want to go and protect Firaun? Right? Who would go and protect Firaun? <laughs> right, but evil right, will will put themselves at a place whereby 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 you, you what you all you, you all good doers or you all righteous people right, you're being unfair towards us. Being very unfair. Right, being and this is something that, that this dialogue is, 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 is being given to our children. Right? So to the point right now where I've met um, youngsters, teenagers, right, who will say things like like you know, why does Allah put, you know, disbelievers, you know, those those those, those who choose to not believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and those who choose to, man, eh, not to believe in, not not to believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, or those who choose to not to, you know, uh, obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, like, why does Allah put them in the hellfire? Why is Allah so mean? I've heard this from ch- from children, eh, and from 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 teenagers saying these kind of things. Why is Allah so mean? I am putting them, you know, they just want to they just, just want to be happy in their lives, what? Right? They just want to be happy, right? So this whole thing about obudiyah, about being slaves, we are slaves of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Everything goes back to Akida. The whole thing goes back to Akida. If you understand you're a slave, you're a slave of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah is your creator. This is why the, the whole beginning of this entire course, your is your your soul was created by who? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who is guarding over you. Who is the one who knows the best? Who knows what's the best for you? Subhanahu wa taala, right? So the victimization is actually it actually goes into like the, 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 those of you who were actually in the class with me um, together. I discussed certain things, um, and we were speaking about how like, how it is um, a methodology of people who want to sin and right? they want okay, to get okay, to sin. You know what? To sin is human. Okay, we know that. Right, we're all humans. Rasulullah said in the hadith, all of you are wrongdoers. Kulukum All of you are wrongdoers. But the best of the wrongdoers are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah did not create angels walking on this earth. Allah created human beings. And the first human being made a mistake also. Nabi Adam alayhi salam. That's why his story is the first story that was told. Together with the story of shaitan. Right? Both two creatures who were able to make mistakes. The angels are not able, it's not in their ability to make mistakes. They, they are a different creature, and they are different creatures altogether. We know that, we understand that. The first story in the Quran, Allah shows us the case study of two individuals, both of whom made mistakes Iblis, Adam. Iblis blamed everybody else. Iblis blamed Nabi Adam, Iblis blamed Allah, Iblis uh, made all kinds of excuses for his mistake. He refused to admit it. Alright? Nabi Adam, alayhi salam, also made a mistake. Nabi Adam straight away repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also what we saw about Nabi Adam, alayhi salam, you don't find a moment whereby Nabi Adam actually blamed his wife, Sayyidah Hawa. You don't find a moment, eh? Nabi Adam, but rather Nabi Adam, he took full responsibility for his decision to go into the tree. Full responsibility. And in fact, also responsibility over his wife who was under him. The responsibility over his own family who was under him. Look at Nabi Adam. There was not a moment you find that Nabi Adam say um, his wife uh, tricked him. Or as what some of the Christian um, the Christian uh, um, narrative, and they, 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 they claim that Eve convinced Adam, right, uh, uh, to take it to tree. Right, this is a Christian narrative. Allahu alam. So Allahu alam bought it, but we don't find anywhere where Nabi Adam pushed the blame at all. He took full responsibility over his actions, and he took the next step. And he is our father, Nabi Adam. Islam. We take his example. He took the next step, and he repented. The door of repentance is always there. Right. But the thing I wanted to point here, I wanted to point out here is that the thing about people who choose to sin and they don't want to stop it. Right. So people who sin without remorse, without regret. Okay? And so those who want to sin and they choose to sin, 
right? And they don't want to stop and don't want to regret their sin. It's a different situation as those who keep falling into sin and they're not strong enough. You know, um, uh, so for example, eh, I'm going I'm to touch a very sensitive, sensitive issue, right? But for example, the hijab. Okay? I have many relatives, many cousins, friends, you know, and people that we know who don't wear hijab. But one thing that I notice about people, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, is that Muslims generally, right, and there are those who don't, that generally Muslims they will say, yes, we know it's a hukum. Uh, we know it's a law in Islam. We know it. But they will say, I'm not there yet. Mm. Okay, okay, fine, fine. It's okay, right? Inshallah, one day. One day you get there, right? But they will not deny the law. They won't deny the law, right? So they will say, we know it's a law. We know it's a law. Right? And it's part of Islam, as we know. Um, you know, dua for me. Inshallah, one day I'll get there. This humility, there is humility. You know, admitting that, yes, Allah put this on, on us women. Um, I'm, I'm struggling with it. You know, I'm admitting that I'm struggling with it. Um, I, 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 I can't, you know, I can't embrace it yet. Um, please dua for me. Okay? MashaAllah. Humility. Right? And with humility, the Prophet Nabi Adam alayhi salam, Allah will give the light of obedience. S. Um, uh, com- as compared to and opposed to a group of people who go around saying, right, you know, wearing it doesn't make you righteous, you know. <laughs> right? You think, what, 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 what? Who, 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 who ever said, who, hmm? <laughs> whoever said that those who wear it are more righteous than those who don't wear it? All we ever say is, Allah commanded it. The righteousness of a person is up to Allah to decide. But you see how the victim position comes in? Right? So, don't, don't, so, so, so some, some people will go, don't think that you're more righteous than me, okay? Uh, or don't think that I don't wear it, I'm less righteous. There's a def- defensive tone coming in. Right? Or, or some people will say, why do those who wear it look down on us who don't wear it? Who's looking down on who? Is anyone looking down on anybody? Did anybody come up to you and say, hey, you're a terrible Muslim, okay? okay? If someone did that, then they are wrong. Like in their Islam, they have misunderstood Islam. In going to, to, to a person and saying to a person, you're a terrible Muslim. I don't know who's a terrible Muslim. I could be a terrible Muslim. And maybe I am. Right? I mean, someone who has said Islam properly would not be able to go up to another person, you know, and, and comment on their taqwa you know, or comment on their righteousness. Can you? Right? But you, what, what you can do in Islam is say, this is a commandment and here's the prohibition. From Allah. From Allah. Allah has said so. Right? But the victim position will say that, you know, and this is what, what has happened. People say, you know, why do those who wear the hijab look down, look down on those who don't wear hijab? Do they? Where? Is there proof? For as far, as far as I know, I know my, my, own, my own personal experience wearing the hijab you know, through my life, I've not met a, per, a single hijabi who looks down on non-hijabis. Have you? <laughs> have you met anyone who's a hijabi who looks down on non-hijabi? And if you have met them, have you not corrected them? Uh, if you have met, if you, if you, if you, if if I do meet a hijabi who speaks down on non-hijabis, I will correct her, <laughs> right? I mean, I will say that you know you're having th- you're having arrogance, eh? You know, uh, straight away you say to that person, you're having arrogance. Arrogance is a terrible sin. Stop it, right? So 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 you see how how shaitan, right? To beautify sin, shaitan places the sinner in a position of being of, of they, 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 they place themselves as victims see that they place themselves as victims you can do, do, do you follow what I'm saying right so so and this happens in so many situations so many situations right the one who is actually the criminal portrays themselves as the victim so as to get their way Right? It's, a, it's a very common uh, method right, that people use. Um, so be very wary, right? And be very so 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 so. You see, yeah, see, yeah. Um, I'm not calling them criminals, but for example, our children, okay, our children, they have learned it from shaitan, right? and and you need to 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 teach them about this, 
Right? So for example, you give them a phone. Okay, maybe your child, you give them a phone, which you paid for. <laughs> right? And you support them in their bill and you pay for the entire thing. They misbehave. Right? In whatever way or form, whether it has to do with the phone or not to do the phone, they misbehave. You confiscate the phone. Which belongs to you in the first place, actually. <laughs> right? You pay for the entire thing. You gave them a privilege. Correct? You took away a privilege. It's a privilege. Correct? What will the first thing they, they will say to, 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 their, to their parents? You're being so unfair. Unfair? And how am I unfair? <laughs> The, was it your hard-earned money that you bought your own phone? Huh? Uh, it being so unfair. Yes, subhanallah. Uh, so, so, you see how, how they, 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 they committed a mistake or they disobeyed you or they did something wrong uh, and in response to them, you take away a privilege and suddenly they are the ones who are victims and they are on the receiving end of injustice and then they say that my, my mother is so unfair. You see how the whole thing is the whole thing just twisted in your face. <laughs> see how it has happened, right? And it, and, and this is what I've heard of, of from, 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 from I mean, teenagers. They say my mother took took it away from me. She's so unfair. How dare she take my phone? How how how, <laughs> how dare you say that about that about your mother? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, right? So la hawla. So this is one thing. Eh? Um, take note of this point. Take note of this point. This entire culture. Of 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 the the sinner presenting themselves as victims, but they're actually sinners, right? And 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 why is this being done? So as to receive compassion from 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 everybody else, to so that they can be supported in their sin. Okay, it's not the same as having compassion. Yes, we should have compassion on those who are sinning. But having compassion on them that they are struggling against their sin. Right? So if someone says, Dua for me, please. I cannot stop this addiction. Dua for me, please. You know, I'm trying to... I, I cannot. I'm trying to stop watching. Well, I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. I cannot stop it. I, 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 you know, I keep falling into it. And from the hadith, we tell them the hadith. Right? Whereby um, a, a son of Adam sins... Then he turns to Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me. Allah forgives him. Then he sins again. Ya Allah, forgive me and Allah forgives him. Then he sins again. And he says, Ya Allah, forgive me and Allah forgives him. And he says, Ya, and, and, and Allah says to the, to the son of Adam, O oh, son of Adam, for as long as you come to me, repentive and remorseful and seeking my forgiveness, I will forgive you. Which means what? People will slip over and over again. There are human beings who do that over and over again. Right? But the, the key is humility and recognizing you committed sin. Right? Be humble and recognize you commit sin and understand you have an all merciful Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But don't go the other way of, you know, you know, don't call me a sinner. I'm not a sinner. How can you call me that? You'll be so mean. You know, you're so you you're so unfair. You're so this, you're so that. You know, I'm the victim here. Hmm. Okay, so this is what um, I need you all to look at it. This is in Indonesia, eh? I didn't realize this actually happened. Indonesia the largest is the largest Muslim country in the world. But uh Dubai, Qatar, they all they're already in it. They're already in it.
the, the fact of the matter is that there's no bullying being done. Eh? The fact of the matter, right, is that there's no bullying being done. It's it's um, people crying loud enough that they are being bullied. But who's the bullier? Can can has anyone ever identified who's bullying? It's just someone who keeps crying. We're being abused. We're being abused. We're being abused. Who's abusing you? Can we call out who's abusing you? <laughs> Who are the bullies here? But just crying out, eh? crying, crying. This is um, happening with feminism. Okay, the feminists. So right now, you know, um, it's, it's basically, you know, what is, you know what's going on? It's, and we're going to go through to the feminism thing. It's basically, it's like how you have a room and a, and a woman's there, right? And the woman begins to cry uncontrollably. Right? And, there's a man, and there are a few men there, okay? And the woman says, you all abuse me, you all abuse me, you all abuse me. Maybe in the past, there was abuse. Maybe, right? But she heard about people being abused. So now she's crying abuse all the time. No one's abusing her. And then the man will come and say, stop crying, stop crying. <laughs> and then she's like, no, you're abusive, you're abusive, you're abusive, you're abusive. And what do you want, what do you want? Uh, so now when they ask, what do you want, what do you want? Now they come and push all of what they want. Right? Just, and, and they'll be given what they want. So they will keep their mouth shut and stop crying. It's, it's a big tantrum. Lah. Basically, the entire feminist movement is a big tantrum. <laughs> it's a big um, <laughs> worldwide tantrum right, that's being done right, uh, uh, against, against the world, lah, basically. Against the world. And, but we're going to you know, go, go through it. Right? And it's, it's going to create monsters eh, of human beings. Create monsters of human beings right, who will find this way to get their way in whatever evil they want to do. Right, um, and then anyone who goes against them, they're going to scream and they're going to be tantrum. They're going to going to create a huge tantrum about it. Then the world will be like, okay, okay, okay what, what do you want? What do you want? Uh, that kind of thing. You're going to see lah. Inshallah, it's our cause. Right, so if you wonder, is, uh, is there really victimization? Eh? Is there really victimization and, 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 more, and marginalization? Is there? Uh, or, is it, or, is, or is it just being claimed? Is it a claim that they keep shouting in our faces? Right? If you think about it, eh? If you think about it. Um, this is something that also some of the Muslims have spoken about um, uh, in online that as long as you don't do the haram act... Everything else before that is perfectly fine. Mm. Like some Muslims in our country have said that. Okay? Um, they have said that as long as you don't do the Haram Act, everything prior to that is okay. Right. So they, they, they go into um, all kinds of other activities. Right. So which, but, but then Shaitan, Khutuwat, Shaitan has, has, Shaitan has footsteps that bring people to the terrible the whole thing is the whole thing is also awesome. the whole thing is sinful and right? nobody can say that you know um, the, the onset is not sinful the whole thing is sinful I 
think my okay Allah my audio is acting up yeah Bismillah, 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 Bismillah. Allah. <laughs> okay, my audio just began to act up. Um, can you hear me now? Allah. Can you all hear me? Bismillah. Okay. Bismillah. Okay, now okay. My my my, my computer does that. Every now and then it, it begins to act up. <laughs> Allah. Bismillah. Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. Okay, Bismillah. Okay. Allah. Bismillah. 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 Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sorry, my um, audio does that. But anyway, I'm not gonna do do the on on, on the video again because I think uh, it the it disrupts my um, connection. So anyway, um, we will send out the video, right? Uh, it's been sent out into the WhatsApp group. So inshallah, we send out to the to Telegram as well. Um, the Telegram technically the the general, the general Telegram on the Musala Telegram is not meant for forward, for forwarded stuff. Um, it's just meant for announcements. Um, so, I see how lah. Maybe can someone, maybe someone can put the the link here on the on the Zoom, right? So basically, basically he goes through he goes through um the different um steps right that is take that is taken um to have the Muslims embrace LGBT, but then as an extension, these are all the same steps that have been taken to embrace any form of evil, right? LGBT is only one of them. Okay, so I'm going to go into my slides um for today. Right, so basically, this is basically the entire the entire series, lah. Right, so we began by speaking about the soul, right, and what Allah has informed us about the soul. Right, we we spoke about the doors to the soul. The soul is something that is precious with us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has entrusted to us um, to preserve and to protect. Right, and the only way to fully preserve, protect, and enhance our soul is by the laws of the Sharia. Right, and the one person who has done it to perfection is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So. 
Anything on his way brings us closer to perfection. Anything that deviates from his way will bring to confirmed destruction. Confirm. Confirmed destruction. Right? Um, and is, and we, when we spoke about the prophetic guidance, um, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that everything will be based on this hadith. Everything from here on uh, is based on this hadith. Clearly halal. Clearly haram. Okay, so if it's not clearly halal, then stay away, right? So if a vi- if a video is not clearly halal, if a game is not clearly halal, clearly halal meaning what helps you in your akhirah. There's a there's a definition of clearly halal, right? So most people don't know about them, right? And so the the, the prophetic advice is stay away, stay away from them, okay. Um, and we went, we went into that, and then the end of the hadith speaks about the heart. All right, and then we spoke about, um, and we spoke about this. We went through a lot of this, and, we, I, and I kept pointing back to this hadith. Right, he will have, he will have um, a jannah. Ma'hu jannah wa nar, fanaruhu jannah wa jannatuhu nar. He has a jannah, he has a nar. His nar is jannah, and his jannah is nar. Okay. Um, I went through that. I went through the aims of of, of this uh, dara because I don't want I don't want that we go through this entire thing and we hear about so much evil, then we go back to our lives as if nothing happened. Okay, that's the that's the worst thing that could have happened, right? From this, uh, I, I mean, having gone through this dara, right? So to um, so this is the first thing, right? And this is why this is why many people are still not leaving the evil that they are seeing, because they don't understand. What is being what is being harmed, right? It is the soul that is being harmed, the precious trust that is our soul, okay? And then um, to understand what is hurting our soul, and we don't even realize it's being hurt, and then to understand um, uh, the solution which we're going to get to, inshallah. Okay, um, the Hazrat Sayyidina Hazrat Huzaifa went through it, right? Um, from from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then uh, we went into like uh, basically this is what the world has has brought to our eyes, okay, and has made it, and has made it beautiful, before our eyes. Right? so and something as 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 commonplace as love for the world, eh? right? So you see even um, people who preach the religion, right, saying uh, um, uh, advertising for dunya, 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 right? They're preaching the religion yet they advertise dunya. That's never been the way of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And those who want to walk on the path of the religion, necessarily, cannot have attachment to dunya, and or at least be fighting attachment to dunya. And those who walk on the path of, um, those who walk on the path, those who want to walk on the path of the religion, because you know, as 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 um, Rasulullah said in a hadith, "Ras kulli khatiya, hub dunya." Like the love of this world, it is a hit source of every wrong action. Sadaqa Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every wrong action, right, from as 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 um commonplace as uh, I won't say light, <laughs> but it's commonplace. As commonplace as um hating another person, you know, or having having envy or backbiting. To as you know, as 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 extreme as what we just saw in LGBT, every khatiya, every wrong action from the words of our Prophet wasalam, goes back to what habbud dunya, love of the world, love of the world, love of the self, love of things, love of um enoughs, love of. Of of uh you know uh, l- l- love of um passion love of whatever right and what is dunya dunya is anything that distracts you from Allah subhanahu wa taala where he as how some say to say Nasir Ibn Abbas yeah Ibn Abbas be in this dunya like a traveler kaabir sabil yeah Ibn Abbas. Right, be in this dunya like a traveler, like someone who has come and taken shade in the tree and then go on. You're not here to be obsessed with this place. You're here to be tested. Understand that. You're here to be tested. 
Uh, and you know, yesterday uh, there was a question that um, was asked. Uh, someone asked about equality and equity. And this morning I had a discussion with my husband about, about equality and equity. Okay, for those of you who don't know the, the difference between equality and equity, uh, is that for example, eh, equality make it very simple. Equality, right? Is like if I say I have three children, right? One is um, one is seventeen, one is ten, and one is three years old. Okay, equality would be I give all of them one dollar a day allowance. That is called equality. Okay? And that means, oh, I'm very fair. Everybody get the same thing. Any parent in their, in their right mind will say, that's ridiculous. <laughs> or any child will say that. <laughs> or any teenager will say that. That's ridiculous. You can't give me $1 and then my five-year-old my five, five brother get $1. Doesn't make sense. Okay. Equity is I look at their needs and I give them according to their needs. And that one's equity. And so, of course, in Islam, it's a lot of equity. Right? In fact, it's a lot, it's a lot of equity there. But my answer yesterday was that don't be distracted by this equity or equality. Right? Islam is about duty. Okay? So, because it's someone to say equality or equity, right? Um, Allah gives wealth in so many ways. There are those who are filthy rich and there are those who are abjectly poor. Right? Allah has given. Right? The laws in Islam are laws in Islam. It's your duty. It's your duty. Praying five times a day is wajib on every Muslim, whether or not you are born into a religious family. Right? Isn't that true? Right? No matter what, five times a day prayer is wajib. Whether your family prays Jumu'ah every prayer or whether your family does not pray at all. Right? Praying five times a day is wajib. Okay. Right? So, in Islam, we're speaking about duty. Right? We're speaking about duty. To make this very clear, to make this very clear, the law of inheritance. Okay? The law of, you know, you know, you know when a man passes away, do you all know who's the one who actually gets a la, the, 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 the biggest portion of his wealth? Do you know who? When a man passes away. Do you all know? As who knows a faraid. <laughs> Who knows Farahid? Okay, okay, someone asked about equity. Eh? Equity basically to give to give um in with regards to need. Or basically to treat people in regards to their own their, their, their own their own circumstances. Uh, so you don't say it's equal don't you want don't want that everybody be all the same all the time, right? But it's basically, yeah, you get you get it. <laughs> wrong, wrong, not daughters, not sons. You all know or not? You see, this, this is what this is what the, the the feminist movement has done has done to us. They keep focusing on you know the the, the, the daughters get half the son, son gets twice the daughter. Do you know how much parents get? <laughs> right, you know how much parents get? Parents get a lot. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Parents get equal. I and they get a huge portion. Parents. And the parents of a, of a man, I guess they get a huge portion, okay? Not to be shy of anybody. Because he only has one parent, right? He only has one mother and one father. Isn't that so, right? A person only has one father and one mother, right? His stepfathers and stepmothers don't, don't get his, his, his wealth. A person can have many wives, and the inheritance is distributed amongst his wives if he has more than one wife. He can have many children. And the inheritance is distributed over his many children. But a man only has one father and one mother. Right? He only has one father and one mother. The parents get the most, actually. <laughs> they get a lot. <laughs> right? And father and mother get equal. Father and mother get equal. What does this tell you about Islam? Duty. Because the duty of a man Right? A duty of a man is to support his parents. But when he dies, who's going to support them? The wife also gets a, a huge uh, portion. Eh? Right? The wife gets a, quite, quite, quite a large amount, depending on whether she has children or not. Right? Because he's also, he also has a responsibility over his wife. Correct? So you look at the loss of inheritance, you see what? Duty. Correct? What is the duty of a man? To his parents. What is his duty also? To his wife. When he passes away, Right, these duties are left behind. So his money goes to these people right, to fulfill the duty. 
of this person. Inshallah. It's, it's, uh, but, but you know what the family has done to us? We are so obsessed with son and daughter. Right? Yes, son and daughter, they get the one is to two parts. Yes. Right? But they are younger than this person who has passed away. Right? And then and Allah is ar-razaq. In Surah Nisa, Allah, after Allah speaks, says, speaks about all of the hukum, Allah says, let not one of you desire what another one has, but ask Allah. Don't forget, Allah gives money, Allah gives wealth, Allah gives rizki. It's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are you so upset? Right? You get half my, what my brother gets. For all you know, his money will go off like that. For all you know, Allah multiplies your money. Alhamdulillah, we have a fair lot. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Okay, and I went through all this. I'm just going to go to we went to this uh, okay. So basically, like we went to the the the, the uh, you know all the um, in detail eh, right? all these uh, attacks you know on on the on the person. Okay, alhamdulillah, I want to get here lah because <laughs> we need one more, one more hour to five o'clock. I I don't want to um I don't want to spend so much time on uh on on what we have gone through from before. Okay, so. So Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The final hour comes while you have palm cutting, palm cutting in your hand, and it's possible to plant it before the hour comes, and you should plant it." This is the words of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, the first protection. This is core protection, aqidah. Aqidah, 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 because this will be the very last strand to uh, be to be to be removed from a human being. Shaitan, shaitan aims here, so he has his khutwat, he has his footsteps, and all his footsteps aim here. Shaitan is not stupid. <laughs> shaitan knows about Allah's mercy. He knows Allah forgives. Every Ramadan he's crying in his jail. Like why? One whole year's worth of work. <laughs> shaitan, eh? <laughs> One whole year's worth of work. In Ramadan he gets locked up. And these Muslims are fasting and they're praying taraweeh and their sins are all being forgiven. I come out Ramadan, one whole year's worth of work all down the drain. <laughs> he begins his, his work again. Shaitan, shaitan, um, shaitan's uh, determination, eh? he's hated for Muslims. He's hated for, for human beings, so strong. He will try, he start his work all over again in Shawwal. Right? Just to get them destroyed. And when every Ramadan, Allah forgives them again. And Allah can forgive human beings so easily. Allah forgives so easily. So shaitan, all his steps will move here. Because he knows that if he gets them to die on other than the shahada, right? If he, gets to, if he pulls out the shahada from the heart, it's in his, the, the soul is his. Okay? So from a very young age, Akida starts. And if someone has not gone through Proper study of the aqidah, they have to do it no matter what age they're at. No matter what age they're at. And they have to do it. Proper aqidah. And you might say, well, I'm so old school, I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm You know what, subhanAllah, our scholars have not done something for no reason. And our scholars have pulled out these 20, these 20 attributes. These 20 attributes are essential on every person. Learn them, teach them, speak about them to your children, tell them, right? And then the four three attributes of the prophets. I know some of you have learnt it before through Akida classes, learn it again. Some of you have never learnt it before, you know of them, you know that these things exist in Islam. You know, and we, in, our, in our society, in, 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 in the Malay society in Singapore, right, um, we have a song for it also. Right, and then the older generation will know this song. Right, Allah wujud khidam baqa. Right, we know that one. Right, yeah, we heard we heard that before, but that kind of like never really knew what it was about. <laughs> right, or or learnt it lah. You know it. Um, but kind of can't remember what is it about. Also, learn it. Learn it. This is the first level of defense. Really, don't 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 underestimate aqidah. Aqidah is the first level of defense. Is a is a core. Is a, is your core defense. Right, because Aqidah will lead to a, a lot of other things. You know, subhanAllah. If Aqidah is weak, everything else is weak. Right, so if the Aqidah is weak, you're easy prey for shaitan. Aqidah is strong. Right, a lot of things, everything else will be strong. InshaAllah. It's mustahil. Eh? It's impossible for someone with strong Aqidah right, to actually um, be okay 
being consistent on sin. Right? It's not it's not mustahil to fall into sin. Because every human beings fall into sin, right? But it's mustahil or it is impossible, you know, and it's not you know, it's, it's impossible that someone with strong akida will be okay performing sins continuously. Because their akida will knock on their heart. You will knock on their door. They will know Allah is watching them. They will know that Allah is all hearing, all seeing, all knowing. This is of the of the twenty attributes, right? Allah Basir in an um Samir Alim. These are all the, the, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You learn in the twenty the twenty the twenty attributes and all these things. And then with Aqida I, a continuous um, emphasis I, on the six pillars of Iman. I bring us all the, back to what we know. This is what we know. <laughs> you know. Unfortunately, with some education, this is what is being um, neglected. You know, too increasingly. Right? So in the past, it used to be very, fo- very strong. Uh, we used to be you used to have to learn this and this is it over and over again. The Quran speaks about these two things over and over and over again. Allah's attributes and the pillars of Iman. Especially two things about the pillars of Iman, about Allah I, and about the day of judgment. Accountability is 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 is, is spoken about everywhere in the Quran. Like accountability, 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 subhanAllah. Right, so, but this is something that, because we're so used to it, people begin to, to push it aside. And unfortunately, eh, unfortunately, there are people who preach the religion who have dismissed this already. Unfortunately, in our time, eh, people who have who teach the religion, they are focused on everything else except this. And this is what is core in our religion. Go back. You know, there, there are four components of Islam. Islam, Iman, Ihsan, and knowledge of the hour, as in the Hadith Jibril. Right? Hadith Jibril, Jibril asked Rasulullah four questions, right? Tell me about Islam, tell me about Iman, tell me about Ihsan, tell me about the hour, tell me about the signs of the hour. Right? There was the question that Jibril asked Rasulullah. The first three are called Thawabit. Right? They are called what is firm, what is strong, right? what roots a person. The last one is called Mutagayrat. Right? It's called what can change. Right? And, and the change is because of its um, delusion right? and, and its deception. Deception. That's why it can, it can, it's like a chameleon. Like a chameleon. It can change with time. Right? So shaitan will bring its ev- his evil, his evil right? under many different disguises. Okay? So the, but the same game, since, since Qabil, Nabi Adam's son, the same game up till today, shaitan plays the exact same trick. Over and over and over again. Shaitan has very, very few tricks. Very few tricks. Right? But he plays the same thing over and over again. Shaitan. Okay. Uh, the LGBT began Nabi Lut's time. <laughs> and, and, and ever since then, he was, he's been on it, eh? Shaitan. Um, so these two things about Akira. Okay, focus on these two things. Okay, of course, this will lead to a lot of other things. Right? This will lead to, and I'm going to share um, something. Let me show you. In, in this past um, half year, I'm not sure how many of you knew of this, right? but this past half year, um, there was a group of um, Ustazat uh, who actually conducted a program once a month. Program. Eh, once a month, once every two weeks. No, once, once a month, once a month. <laughs> once a month program right? um, aimed at actually quite a large um, age range. Right? So it's Ustazat who mainly trained in Syria. Right? Under, under the leadership of Sister Maria Yusuf Magazine and also I think Sister Khadija and also a few of the Ustaz lah. Right? It's basically they, they came together and they developed a program. Right? And the reason for this program right, was basically an, an, was an alarm right? um, that our children don't know how to maneuver the online world. Mm. So it was an alarm. Right? So, so a lot of my school teachers right, they, they, they began to get um, uh, uh, they, they, they were getting afraid for the children. But the program actually was, it was between, it began in, in July. It just ended, it ended this, this December. <laughs> we just ended it um, once a month. I don't know whether you all like, were not aware of this. <laughs> it actually happened. But quite a number of people were actually involved in it. It was between the ages of 5 to the ages of past 30 years old. And it's small halakas of around 8 children or teenagers or adults. Right? Small groups. 
with a teacher there teaching them. And of the things that we taught them, right? Right? And this is basically goes into our Akira. Oh, yes, my mouse is appearing. Okay. Um, so basically, was this was this was, this was an over, overall view, lah. Like, and we, we taught them Slawat and Zikir and so on um, for kids, lah. Like, you know, but of course, they, they they are actually also teenager halakas, as well as um, as well as uh, uh, adult halaka, right? Circles, right? And then um, we actually went into all things because the whole point of the entire program, right, was about online taqwa. It was about online taqwa. I used to try to teach them, you know, about these things. Um, we went through the, the Allah's, we went through Allah's sifat, al-basir, right? Because this is something that is not internalized in many human beings and many Muslims. This goes back to our, our Akidah, right? So we, were, we just, just, just took about six months eh, of, 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 of once a month um, kind of uh, talking to the, to the children about this. And the children, would tell, would, I, I was one of the teachers and my, my, my halaka was between the age of um, seven to nine. And I took girls. I had girls and all girls group. It was between boys and girls. Right? There were boys groups. There were girls groups. Right? And then there were teenagers. There were children. There were pre, um, lower primary, upper primary. And then you have adult, adult groups. Right? It was, I don't know whether you all got the memo. <laughs> it, was, it was being spread. But I don't know whether it, hit, it got you to you all or not, the memo. Um, and then, mashallah. Right? So when, and sorry. Okay, so when, um, uh, we spoke about muraqaba. Right? What is muraqaba? That Allah is watching you all the time. And we told so many stories in our, in our halakas to the children and to the, and to the teenagers and to the adults. Stories of muraqaba. Right? Of, of knowing Allah is watching you. Allah is watching you. This is something to be, to be taught to every person. If it's not done to you when you were young, you, should, you need to go through it. I understand the concept that Allah watches you all the time. So you only do what Allah likes that you do, right? And then we spoke about, um, this is a very, uh, this is a song for it, right? but basically we taught them this as well. Allahu ma'i, Allahu hadiri, Allahu shahidi, Allahu nazir ilayya, Allahu ma'i, Allahu hadiri, Allahu qaribu. It's a song that, the tune for it, but I forgot the tune already. Um, the, um, this is from a story, like of one of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you can find this story in when I, I actually speak about it when I teach prophetic parenting, right? Because it's, it's a story that is, that is quoted in the book on prophetic parenting. Right? Basically, this wali, he named uh, Sayyidina Sahil, uh, he was five years old. I was he was five years old. He woke up in the middle of the night and he saw his uncle praying, his khal, eh? his mother's brother, praying. And he sat there and he watched his uncle. So after the uncle finished praying, the hajjud, eh? the uncle looked at him and said to him, do you want to remember Allah? And he said, yes, I want to remember Allah. And the uncle said, whenever you stir in the night, say, Allahu ma'i, Allah is with me. Allahu hadiri, Allah is present with me. Allahu shahidi, Allah is looking at me, Allah is witnessing me. Allahu nazirun ilayya, Allah is looking at me. Say this three times. So time passed. Right? And after some time, the uncle, said, the uncle is doing tarbiyah. Eh? He's teaching muraqaba. He's teaching the, this, 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 this boy muraqaba. Why is muraqaba? Allah is watching. This is a protection. We're talking about inward protection. Like it, it's, it's aqidah. It's aqidah. Right? Having a deep sense, a deep feeling. Wherever you go, no matter what, Allah is watching you. If you can instill this in your children... And in yourselves, so many things get solved. You don't have to worry all the time anymore. Because why? Allah is always with them. And they're always aware Allah is with them. So no matter what, even if they fall into sin, they know the door of tawbah, they know the door of repentance. Right, so anyway, after some time, the uncle says to him, have you been doing what I told you to do? And he says, yes, my, oh, my uncle has been doing it. Then the uncle says to him, increase it to five times. So he, the time, time goes on, he does that. He does it five times. Every time he stays in the night, he will say, Allahumma a'i, Allahu hadiri, Allahu shahidi, Allahu nadir ilayya. Allahumma a'i, Allahu hadiri, Allahu shahidi, Allahu nadir ilayya. Allahumma a'i, Allahu shahidi, Allahu hadiri, Allahu shahidi, Allahu nadir ilayya. He will say it. After some time, the uncle says, have you been doing it? He says, yes. And the uncle will increase for him. And this continues for quite some time. Eventually, the uncle said to him, have you been doing what I've been telling you to do? 
and he was quite quite uh, you know quite of an age at this point in time, and he said, "Yes, my uncle has been doing it." And the uncle said, "How do you find it?" And then he said, "I find a sweetness in it, and I like it, and I find a sweetness in it." And the uncle said, "Then have you realized that the one who knows that Allah is with him?" Allah is present with him. Allah is witnessing him. Allah is looking at him. How can he ever disobey Allah? And then Sayyidina Sahel, he said, When my uncle said that to me, I never disobeyed Allah for as far as I knew. As far as I was in his control, he never Disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From that age eh He said wali lah Yang awliya And then they're awliya They're wali He never I never Disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But that is what Inward understanding Right That Allah is watching Right And then we went to muhasabah Right And this is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam An intelligent person Who always do it uh, It is from the hadith of Rasulullah sallam Whereby um, The This is the hadith here Hold on that is not here. I uh, basically the kais, uh, the kais, right? The one who mandana nafsahu, wa wa amil lima baad al maut. The hadith goes that the one who is the one who is wise is the one who holds himself to account. The hadith is called Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one who is wise is the one who holds himself to account and acts for what is after death. Whereas the one who is um, foolish is the one who follows his desires. And in the hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him. That's foolish. Right? So we spoke about this, eh? um, you know, uh, about istighfar, right? Istighfar, and then we spoke about um, muhasaba, like what have I done? And then and reflecting. And to look at scenarios with them. And then haya. These are all inward protection. Right? All from our aqidah. Haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haya with um, hi, hi, Haya with the people But more importantly Haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? um, and, then, and then you went into a lot of the case studies lah. What is Haya? It is hadith, uh, Haya and Iman are two that go together If one is lifted The other one is also lifted okay? Haya and Iman protects us from Haya protects us from evil right? so It's all mashallah then we spoke about how to attain haya, about dhikr and so on with the children lah, mashallah. And always with our our series, we have like videos and stuff like that to show them, you know, mashallah. And good friends, and all for children lah, haya and then shukur, which leads us to shukur eventually. And this is what Shaitan was pointing at. Eh? Shaitan himself, eh? give us advice. <laughs> Shaitan said, I, "You will find most of them ungrateful, right? Because no shyness in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." That means no gratitude for what Allah has given you. To use what He gave you of your eyes, of your intellect, of your mouth, and so on. To disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It goes right to all these things. It's all the self. <laughs> right? It's the self, it's aqidah, it's Islam. It's all there. Right? But it has been neglected. It has been neglected. Right? So we have haya, we only use our body parts to do what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how you teach them. Somebody asked the question today, how do I teach my children? It is lah. <laughs> it is how you teach them. You know, you bring stories, right? You you um you speak about um positive situations, negative situations, about shukur, you know, in three way in three ways. Shukur with the with if with your with your tongue, shukur with your um limbs, shukur with your heart, right? To Allah and talk talk and talk and talk all you want about how Allah has given us so much. Right? Speak Fill their hearts with love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all Akida. Akida tied in very closely with Tasawwuf because Akida and Tasawwuf come so close together. And when they come together like this, Sharia is very, very, it's, it's a natural thing. You know, subhanallah. Right? And then um, about being grateful. You know, I'm not going to control Allah. I'm not going to teach you all this kid stuff. Eh? <laughs> right? But um, we did all this scenario, you know, kid scenario and everything. We actually had this also that we did with the kids. Um, I said, I want to actually want to, want to share here. Right? Um, this was our last halaqa, ethics using social media and online games. This was basically why we did the entire series. Right? It was a six month series um, for this reason. Because of the alarm, right, there has there has been there has been raised um, amongst the satiza, right? That uh, you know people don't know how to help, 
their children and children don't know what are the alarms right so it, um uh, all of them, all of them were like, yeah, oh, we see this. <laughs> Everywhere we go, we see this all the time. Let this not be a common sight in your household. Eh? Please, please. <laughs> I see myself, I'm still trying to control. Right? Let this not be a common sight in your household. Okay? Try to place a limit to when you use it. Right? So if you're playing with them, if you're interacting, if you're teaching them, your phone is not in your hand. Please, please, please. <laughs> right. Get it away. Human soul to human soul. Right. The soul benefits the most from another soul. And the soul benefits the most from an illuminated soul. Right. We've lived for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right. So, and then we, we, we began to teach them about whispers. How the whispers happen. And I'm, this is all part of our revision. Eh? What, what we're doing, what we're going through, lah. Does that happen last last week? <laughs> last Sunday we had this program <laughs> with the kids. Um, you know, the first whisper. It's online. I can do whatever I want. I can be a different name. I can be a different age. I can be a different gender. I can be a different avatar. I can be in in all kinds of relationships. I can do whatever I want to do, right? Or I only like and share whatever I want. I only type. I never do or say anything. So all the whispers, it happens to adults. <laughs> it never happens to the children. It happens to adults, right? It's as if the online world is fake and not real. The fact is, yeah, the fa- uh, it's, or on the second whisper, it's okay to lie, to kill, use. If you go online, the, the amount of bad language in games, never, see, you know what? Don't give your kids games, please. Don't. We spoke about it, eh? Don't give your kids games. Right, it's just a game for fun. I right, see no, normalizing violence, lying, and the use of vulgarities. Okay, I'm sharing this here because I find that this program it did this no I I was not involved in the in the development of the program. I, I was just one of someone who was teaching it, but I found that the material was was is really gold lah, mashallah. Such good material, mashallah. Um, that I feel it's jam sayang if it stops there, <laughs> you know, that it should be spread should be spread right so more people can actually begin to do this you know with their children talk about it right the whispers and everything so when they say my my my, my friends are playing this game you know my friends all this my friends all that now how come i cannot do how come i cannot how come i cannot and uh, that kind of thing you know and, and you're going to face this because why they're going to go to school very few people do homeschooling right because homeschooling takes, takes a lot you know and and if you can if you can do homeschooling do homeschooling but if you can't your kids will go to school, right? It's, it's the majority of human, I mean, majority of the people in, in our country, they go to school. And when they go to school, they're going to see all kinds of things in school. So how are you going to you know, protect that, um, that, that, that purity that you try to bring them up with? You try so hard to keep them pure. And they go to school and they see all kinds of things. That's why we're talking about inward protection. Because you cannot keep them in your in, in your four walls all the time. There comes a day where they go out. I, uh, yesterday I had one question from someone. Um, it's a good question, mashallah. She asked me, she said that, you know, my mother had a um, very high standard, mashallah. <laughs> right, and she didn't allow for a lot of things in the household. Um, while my father allowed. Right, so I, was, I, was, I, I grew up with, with different parenting. Right, my mother and my father. Um, and she said that, would I say that my father's my father allowing us on doing all these things actually was um, was a, had a positive effect in that we did not rebel against my mother and I said to her honestly eh, honestly um, all of us we are close to my mother of course mashallah and that us not going into all of these things was actually because of my mother's closeness to us. She had a nurturing hand. Well, she had an, she had an iron fist. She had a nurturing hand as well <laughs> with her iron fist. Um, uh, uh, she, she, she educated. My mother educated. She never commanded. Right? But she educated. And I said that it was because of her education, right? That that all of us looked at it, you know, and thought about it, and left it. And I said that 
um, that is not is not. Don't ever think for a moment that allowing it, right, is the re- is is the is the solution to stop being rebellion. No, no, rebellion is stopped by nurturing, teaching, and understanding. That's how you stop rebellion. All right, you talk to them as human beings, soul to soul. Your soul to their soul, right? Explain to them, treat them with like, like the human beings that they are who have an aql, they have a mind. Treat them like that. They can think for themselves, right? Show them the, the says, no, don't show them, but tell them there's a lot of evil in these things. You know, on the day of judgment, how does it come out? Do you know how? I mean, and, and so don't, don't, be, don't, be a, don't be a blaming and commanding and a negative voice. No. Be a loving voice. That's what my mother was to us. She was a very loving, eh? my naysayer, <laughs> right? but a very loving one. <laughs> my naysayer nonetheless. Right? So that is how you, 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 you speak to them. Right? Not open the door and let them figure out themselves because they might destroy themselves. So I said to her that, you know, um, the door being open in my house, right? I mean, because my father allowed for it, right? I actually regret by having watched what I watched or, or listened to what I listened to. I wish this was not, in, was not in, my, in my memory system, you know, because this actually pulled an addiction, right? To watching um, sitcoms, to watching a comedy, to watching drama, right? That all these stories is in my system, that I don't know how right now all of these things have affected my Quran and my prayer and my and my iman. I don't know, right? Had this all these things not been there, how would have how would my iman be right now? I don't know. It was the same thing also when I when I was discussing my my cousin Samaria, right? she was saying, you know, you know, sometimes people say, you know, we all grew up with it, can we all watch all these movies and all these games and stuff like that? We grew up with Disney, you know, all of us we did. We grew up with we, well, most of us grew up with Disney. Right, um, and, 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 and Nickelodeon and whatever lah eh? <laughs> back then. Um, and then she was like, and people keep saying, look, we all turned out okay. Right, and this, I remember this conversation with her very, very clearly. You know, and she was like, we think we turned out okay. <laughs> we think we turned out okay. For all you know, right, if it weren't for all these things that we watched, we would have been, we would be right now very far ahead of our Quranic understanding. For all you know, without all the things that we watched, our khushu in our prayer will be easier. For all we know, eh, with all the things that we watched, our tahajjud will be so easy for us to perform. For all you know, right? For all you know. So we think we're not affected by it. We think that the negative effect didn't, didn't impact us. You don't know. You look at the ulama of the past, and you see us now, <laughs> obviously it had an impact, right? Obviously, eh? Right, so it, um, so too much of it, right, will make people desensitized of cruelty and suffering. About this, one of our one of our um points, lah, right. The third whisper, everyone is doing it. <laughs> whisper, eh, whisper, whisper, whisper. Shaitan on his game, right. If I don't watch it, I will be left out. No, subhanallah. Um, uh, I can share the slide somewhere. The program has come to an end. Someone asked how to sign up. It has come to an end. It was during. It was. It was. It began in July. Just ended in December. Just ended last week. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. So Islam began strange. So I I spoke about, uh, uh being okay being a stranger. Okay. Um. So basically the re- so so how do we counter all these three whispers? Eh. These are the three main whispers, of the time. Of our zaman, and to three main whispers of our zaman are these three whispers, right? Um, from for adults and for children, both. So how do you respond? Hisab is real. You say to yourself, accountability is. It all goes back to what? It goes back to akida, akida. It's all akida, <laughs> right? My like that. The angels on your right and your left, they are real. They are right there. <laughs> They're watching. They are writing. Right, and then come the hadith, right? Well, when a slave of Allah commits a sin, a black spot appears on his heart. When he refrains from it, seeks forgiveness and repents, his heart is polished clean. But if he returns, he, it, is incre- it increases until it covers his entire 
heart. Okay, I actually, uh, let me just see if I can get Zamardia's slides. So Zamardia actually sent out very good slides for, for, the, for, 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 for parents. Right, so uh, let me just see if I can get out her slides. She made very beautiful slides, which I feel, which I feel that if we don't share it, it's going to be um, uh, wasted. Right, let me just share. Yeah, you all can just enjoy and get some of my just likes. <laughs> like, like, like a, a um, big, big fan of Susan Maria. <laughs> she hears this, she'll be like, stop it, eh. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of Susan Maria. I know Susan Maria just likes. Jump, 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 jump. Allah. No, 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 I know where it is. Yeah. Or oh, an e-booklet. Alright, okay. Let me just finish this one first. Then I want to get back to my slides and have this last one that I want to share with you all. Then inshallah, we will end by 5 o'clock. Inshallah. <laughs> okay, um, and then as a result, so, so all of what we spoke about, eh, this entire past four weeks, akhlaq and ibadah. Okay, akhlaq and ibadah. These are the two symptoms of a sick soul, right? Of a, of a, of a, of a, of a dying soul. You will find your ibadah affected, akhlaq affected. And when the soul dies, iman comes out. Iman is pulled out and then murtad. They leave the religion. Okay, so these things affect these things. So straight away, straight away, right? With, the, with games, Okay, with videos, with movies, with all of this stuff that we are exposed to, we spoke about it. It is a godless life that are pushing us into. It's a godless life. Right, so whatever we see we're exposed to, it will it will consume us and enter our ruh. Right, enter our ruh. Right, if you continuously expose, it will destroy you. Even though you can say it's just online. I don't do it. I just watch fornication. I don't do it. I just watch vulgarity. I just hear vulgarity. I don't do it myself. You know, all of this destroys your soul. Bit by bit. This will happen. This will happen. Right? And this is what we, we cannot afford to happen because we have the day of judgment to, be, to get ready for. <laughs> you know, get trying to get ready for your muqiyama. <laughs> your muqiyama. You know, man... As for the one who comes to Allah with a pure heart, right? Nothing will help you. And what's a pure heart? Akhlaq. The first thing to be checked on the day of judgment, salat. Right? Akhlaq and ibadah. First thing thrown out. Eh? First thing thrown out, akhlaq and ibadah. Right? With this, with this, with this, um, with this entire um, uh, evil. And then we give the kids three red flags. Okay, because we know as long as you're not the parent, you can't actually remove the device. <laughs> Only the parent can do that, <laughs> right? So we we give them um, inward uh, checks, right? so or, or clear checks, so they can choose for themselves to stop it. Okay, especially for the age I was taking, uh, seven to nine, for them the issue was mainly games. Now for seven to nine, eh, the biggest issue is games. Games are evil. I'm going to repeat it. Games are evil. Unless they're good games. Right? But a lot of uh, mindless games, they're all evil. Right? Stay away from games. Um, so the first thing, so we, we, to, we, we taught the kids red flags. Okay, so, so it's easier for them. They have like, this kind of like, you know, um, things to, to know to off it. Alright? So in fact, in fact, when I gave them the case, did I show all the case studies? Oh, okay, let it on. When the case study Oh, the case study was just now. Okay, uh, I shouldn't want want the case study. The case study just now. I I I, I, I skip all the the, the case studies. Eh, uh, when I showed them this. Uh, when I showed them this case study, right? I said Amin was playing alone an educational game. Okay, educational game on his handphone. When suddenly a shameful image of a woman pops up, he felt the urge to click on it as he was curious. It's only a few seconds away. Okay, what should we ask the kids that as seven nine old girls? What would you advise, Amin? You know what the response was? Go and tell mother. 
That's a good response. Don't try and off it yourself. You know why? Because now pop-ups all have fake crosses on them. Do you know that? Like pop-ups now, I, it happened to me before, I got tricked. <laughs> right, so the pop-up appeared, there's a cross that's bigger. There's a tiny cross by the side. The, the cross to, to close it. So the first thing your eye will see is the big cross. The big cross is fake. Right, so when you click the big cross, it brings you to, to the website. And you actually clicked on the thing without realizing. The small cross is the corner by the side. Right, so I was like, Why, how in the world did I get to the website? Uh, so so when, when we showed this to the kids, they all say, put the phone down and call Mark. <laughs> put the phone down and call me. Good answer. <laughs> put, the, put the phone down like that, face down, call your mother. Right, so she will, she will off it for you. Okay? Be, don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Right, because now the shaitan has, has learned how to not allow you to off it. So once you go to the website, it gets worse. Then you all panic. You don't know what to do. Uh, so, uh, so that was the answer for, for them. And mashallah, I was also, also proud of them when they gave the answer. <laughs> I go and tell the mother. Right? Um, the kids scenarios were like, we, we give the kids lah, when the kids scenario. Uh, it's not all about Zohor, bring Zohor, everything. Yeah lah. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to um, show the red flag. So first thing, as we told them, red, first red flag, vulgarities. A, a, and also adults, eh? pay attention. Eh? Any vulgarity, don't go there. Your first, they, they tell you not to come here by, by, by the vulgarities. So any video, any game, any TV, any movies, <laughs> anything. There's anything, not just vulgarities, but anything vulgar. Anything inappropriate, anything that is against modesty. And there's against modesty. Right? Throw it out. Right? So even in the chat box, the game itself, the people in the game, the nicknames, the avatars, right? all of these things. Good people only have good things to say. <laughs> this is our bottom line. Good people, good people only have good things to say. Um, tell your kids that. Second red flag, lack of modesty. Okay, so if the games contain these things, throw it out. Right, the enemies contain these things, throw it out. Okay, third red flag, in which my like cat is more busy. <laughs> we made them ask the question. Do you do this? Which my like cat is more busy? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the left writes bad deeds, the one on the right writes good deeds. You know, mashallah. Okay, so anyway, um, let me just uh, show you all this thing. And then I'm going to go back to my slides. Um, so, was by the Akhwat Sham. So, basically, um, that was what we were doing, right? So, it is uh, uh, of the media misusage happening around us. Some of us are free of. Right, so we decided to do this, to do this thing lah. Like to teach them, to teach them essential values of um, self-restraint in this age of social media, right? and having friends who also do it together with you, right? So adults and children, everybody, right? So this is why we we, we imparted the um, the uh, the this thing lah. I so muraqaba, when you muraqaba with them, what is muraqaba? Right, you can you can take the the the, the, the slides that I thought so I did very good slides. <laughs> and then how to increase muraqaba. So this was basically our our um talk with the parents. And we had a talk also with the parents, I right, to teach parents as well. Right? And then about this, right, signs that you're going towards muraqaba. Okay. Um and then of the ulama about muraqaba, right? And uh, and uh, uh, when you're alone and disobey Allah, thinking that Allah is looking at you, then you have done a great sin. If you have disobeyed Allah, while well, you know He's looking at you, right? And the one who thinks it, that, that, that thinks that Allah does not see him, then he has disbelieved, right? And then it's uh, what we taught them, and then muhasaba again. So all this is all for for, for the parents. Like, I will ask some idea that I can share with, share on the group, right? So you all can keep it, right? and you can just remind yourself of what is muhasaba as well, right? Um, Self assessment and so on, right? And then is the hadith that we shared Al Kayis. Al Kayis man dana nafsahu wa amila liman ba'ad al maut. Wal ajiz man atba'a nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna ala Allah. Okay? Naam. Right? So, it, um, yeah, so then, then we spoke about muhasaba and then la. So these are the, 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 the values, there are four values. First thing is um, um, Musayna Muhammad Muraqaba. Right, knowing Allah's Allah's watching you, and then muhasaba, taking yourself to account, and then haya, okay, haya, 
um, about, about Hayat in the Quran and so on Hayat about Hayat And then Hayat in Hadith as well Right, All shyness is good And then the fourth one is Shukr Okay, misconception of Hayat The difference between Hayat and Malu Malu is a social construct Haya is defined by Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And why, how do you say that? Because for example, right Very clear example Praying in public Someone will might say Malu wa, people see me or, Malu meaning shy And Malu wa, people see me Why? Social construct Right, people were going to judge me Will they ever say Haya? <laughs> <laughs> Will they ever use the word haya on this case? No They use the word malu Correct? Shy A shy people see me I'm, I'm embarrassed Not shy but embarrassed I'm embarrassed Right? People will see me wear this hijab I'm embarrassed uh, Social construct Okay um, Then about haya How do we attain haya? It's how, how we impart to them How do we attain haya? Like haya of the heart Haya with Allah um, It's all under our religious education and in good company as well, right? And then the last, the last trait. So the four traits that we still, that we imparted, eh, was was shukur, right? gratitude, right? and then gratitude of um, the types of shukur which leads a person to ibadah, okay? And then goodness, and then um, shukur for calamity as well, and remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay, I'm going to go back to my slides. Okay, so this is basically all. It goes back to akida, akida, and then here I. I just shared all this with you all, eh? <laughs> basically. <laughs> okay, purification. This is tasawuf. Right, tasawuf. It's all you now, it's all, it's nothing, I'm not telling you anything new. And I can't tell you anything new because our teacher is the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I'm telling you something new, I'm deviating. Correct? Right, like, I'm not telling you anything new. It's not new. And it cannot be new because it's from the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What he has taught has been there for a thousand four hundred years, <laughs> I'm just reminding. We're just reminding ourselves. That's all, right? So muraqaba haya, I muraqaba and muhasaba. Eh? Uh, they come together, lah. Muraqaba muhasaba, haya shukur. Then love for all that is pure. Uh, so meaning, you're gonna bring them up, and you're gonna fill your lives with what is pure, pure speech, pure content of speech. Pure books, pure stories, right? Pure, basically a pure lifestyle. Try to keep it as pure as possible and loving people who are pure, loving the righteous. This is this is very strong in upbringing. I feel like giving a, I'm giving a, a parenting course. <laughs> Circles of Noor, some article. Circles of Noor was this project lah. That we did from from July to December, about our base. It just finished. <laughs> Sorry, I'm telling you all about this now. Um, we did do publicity, eh? To I mean, and, and <laughs> we actually did publicize. Um, and we have like I don't know, I think about forty, fifty people joined. Uh, it was publicized. It was publicized. Inshallah. Um, I will share Inshallah I will share the, I will ask my cousin But she should be She should be okay with it um, Sharing Being shared I will share Inshallah To the, to the groups eh? Or you can text me um, Directly And I will uh, Share with you Let me Just put my number there If you don't know my number lah. 812474 Eh Okay 8812470 Okay Alright So if you want Get it lah Okay <laughs> okay. Um again okay, nah, I so love for all that is uh pure and for the people who are pure. Okay. Okay, now protection on the outward. Okay, on the outward. Some of five things, eh? Islamic practices, first and foremost. Uh, you cannot you cannot you cannot be without the sharia. Right? So for yourself, right, individually as as, as, as protection. To be present in salat, inward and outward. Meaning, go and learn what you are saying in your prayer. And every prayer, make a commitment to focus as best as you can in that prayer. As, law, as well as um, other aspects of Islamic law like hijab and so on. Right? Meaning, meaning um, uh, and not, uh, to present, Afan. Not, not to be present. To be present, yes. To be, <laughs> yes, to be present. But I wrote to, to present. 
to present the prayer and all laws of Islam inwardly and outwardly. So when you teach laws of Islam, don't command it, teach it. It's a big difference, eh? Commanding the laws of Islam and teaching the laws of Islam are two different things. Teach them haya, teach them modesty, teach them obedience, teach them love, teach them reverence, teach them trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all teaching. That was what my mother did with us, right, for myself. You know, she, she, was, she, you know, she, she put in all these laws, yes, in our, in our household, but she taught them. She was teaching. Okay, so then a, a deep reverence and exaltation for Allah and laws of Islam. So you must show it, right? So it still seems, seems to be inward, but it's actually outward. And right? because you're going to show, right, um, a deep reverence. So you hear the azan, keep okay, quiet, answer the azan. Right? You hear um, someone's praying, okay, some people are praying over there. Can you all keep it down here? Right, keep it down. You know, your, 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 your father and your brothers are all praying. Keep it down, keep it down. Right, that kind of thing. Okay, reverence. Reverence, but gentleness, right? Rasul says in the hadith, gentleness does not enter into any affair except that it beautifies it, and harshness does not enter into any affair except that it um, ruins it. All right. So follow the way of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And in Quran, I cannot emphasize more. Um, hadith of Quran from Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The, the solution in the end of time is abundant Quran. Abundance. We're not looking, looking at one time a day, but I know we're all trying somewhere, starting off somewhere. But abundant Quran. Try your best to increase the Quran in recitation, in understanding, in learning, and in, in, in implementing, in loving the Quran. A full exaltation of the Quran. Okay? This is, the, this is, this is your, these are your weapons. So your shields, right? And those end of time. Right? Of course, of course, Surah Kafi and the Dua of the Shahud, which is the famous Dua, you can find it in the, in the glorious treasure, um, seeking protection from four things, right? From the Azab of Kubur, Azab of the Hellfire, I mean, punishment of Kubur, punishment of Hellfire, from the fitna of life and death and the fitna of the Dajjal. Right? I'm not going more than what has been said all the while. Right, because this is something that is from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's there's no other way except for his way. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No other way except for his way. So someone so somebody are thinking, yeah, we kind of hear this all the time. Yeah, we hear it all the time. <laughs> are we doing it or not? <laughs> this one, this that I think are we doing it? I right, dua in good deeds with intention to protect. Right? So it, uh, always seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Dua is the strongest thing you have. Right? Allah goodness is always um uh, goodness is always um, a billion times stronger than evil. Right? And then community, I, I mentioned here community, look for a jama'ah. That means look for a group of like-minded people. Right? And seek strength and support through them. E- and you know what? Even if it's online, even if it's online, even if you keep coming to a particular class or you follow a particular teacher or you follow, I mean, basically, you know what? That's your jama'ah. That's your jama'ah. Right? A person is with, with, those, with those whom he loves. Right? So follow them. Rasulullah said in another hadith that a person is with whom he imitates. So who do you imitate? Right? So, so find them. Right? Even if they don't know who you are or they've never met you, right? find them and follow them. Right? If you can find people holding strongly under the way of Allah and the Prophet. Community is very important. Community keeps you strong. And for me, sometimes, mashallah, whenever I feel um, uh, uh, shaky right, on the inside because of people saying all kinds of things and saying um, what is right with regards to da'wah and so on, I'll go back to my teachers and I hear what they say. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, I, f- I hear what they say and I, and I feel grounded again. My body is going back to them. And then, okay, so apa, cleansing, eh? Cleansing. Three, I'm going to give only three things to cleanse. Removing sources of destruction in the home, if you know, so they talk to your family, talk to your family, right? Um, if you have Netflix, get rid of it, right? <laughs> get rid of the Netflix. If you have, um, if if you have given your kids phones, speak to them, speak to them and say and say that you know we we're going to limit this, or we're going to remove this, right? But speak to them. Okay, be be the nurturing be be uh, the nurturing hand, the nurturing voice. Right? Um removing 
all forms of worldly glorification and admiration from your conversations, right? So people who talk about dunya all the time, you're putting dunya in their hearts, all right? So remove evil, remove dunya, remove all things that distract from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your conversations, from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of the speech of the son of Adam is against him. And this is a way of speech in Arabic anyway, but it's a, it's a com- full, complete statement. Then there is an exception. Right? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, all the speech of the son of Adam is against him. Except, except what, Ya Rasulullah, we are listening. Except what? Zikrullah. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ta'allum wa ta'ali. Right? And studying. You know, no, no, it's a different hadith. It's a dunya mal'una. Except all, it says Zikrullah. And amr bil ma'aruf wa nahi anil munkar. Commanding to what is good and forbidding what is wrong. And follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be a nurturing voice. Okay? Don't be a negative, um, hurtful, right, and, uh, and, and basically foul voice. Don't be that. Because you're going to represent the religion. Right? So be a nurturing, loving voice while you guide. You're guiding. You're not trying to hurt people in bringing the religion to them. You're trying to guide them to the religion. Right? And then remove all activities that seek dunya and it's the love of dunya. Dunya and alam are different. Please different shit eh alam is a natural world that's Allah's creation that points you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dunya is all that distracts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so as far as possible as far as possible remove all the activities in your household um, in your life that seek dunya right you know you know you know you know I'm going to speak about one thing shopping (laughs) It's hard eh, as women eh? <laughs> Shopping Shopee Shopee <laughs> Now now it's all the The Shopee The 12.12 sale The 1.1 sale The apple I don't know what sale All kinds of sales eh now MashaAllah MashaAllah La hawla wa la quwata illa billah Instilled in your ch- One thing I, I appreciate from, from my mother also Um I'm just like sharing all my mother's parenting techniques eh? <laughs> Um uh, MashaAllah I appreciate about her is that 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 only go to look to buy something when you actually need it. Right? So don't go and just window shop. Now, window shopping brings you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It hardens your heart. Right? So now you can do window shopping on the phone window. Right? The, the phone has become your window for window shopping. Scroll, 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 scroll to all kinds of products that you don't even need. But you see, 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 and then um, it's you're wasting your time in your own room, <laughs> right? So only when you need something, only when you need something, then go and look it up. Go and look it up. See what you what you need. So if you need a new if you need a new pair of shoes, right? You go and look for a new pair of shoes. I right? find what exactly what you want. Buy that. That then, okay? Don't go beyond that, right? Shopping is a very dunyawi activity. Right, shopping It's going shopping <laughs> And maybe, maybe, maybe Stop it Stop it Right Have you know, This is the way of, of Sayyidina Fatima Zahra The way of Rasulullah Islam. They only have what they need And they have very, They have minimal Go their way you know, While you have to have Your heart detached From the world You also have to have Minimum of the world Right Because The less you have The less questions On a day of judgment We are believers On a day of standing Okay and then cleansing on the inward. So this is the removing the attachment. Eh? That, that we know harms our soul. Remove attachment to the world and its laws. Right? So attachment in the heart uh, meaning meaning to people, to praise, to money, right? to lifestyles. Right? At- we, we have attachments to lifestyles. Eh? We are attached to our devices. We are attached to our to, 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 to do gaming. Right? We are attached to watching films and movies. We are attached to it. It's an addiction. Right? So be okay with being different from the rest of the world. Because Islam began strange. And Islam will, will, will end strange. So good news to the strangers. 
قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so he gave us that 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 hadith صلى الله عليه وسلم as a comfort alhamdulillah for our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he's comforting us it's okay stranger <laughs> it's okay you're weird you're you're weird amongst your friends wearing your long skirt and wearing your tudung and wearing your and and, and then being a sajada wherever you go and then you go to pray at this field while everybody is eating you go and pray you're going to be weird embrace being weird because because if being weird is what is the path of my prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then be as weird as you want on the path of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay alhamdulillah um naam okay uh let me see the questions here i actually done done in my slides alhamdulillah <laughs> that's all i have to share um i hope it was beneficial let me just go back um here Yeah. Um, okay, prophetic parenting is on speaker. Yes, it is on speaker. Uh, the program ended already, so I will share the slides there, inshallah. Um, <laughs> okay, some some commentary lah. Like, I know people like yeah, you think about it. Like, you know, you read you read stuff. My mother, you know, someone posted about sweet very high. My mother banned me from reading it. She did not allow me to read it at all. I've not read a single Sufi Bari Hai. When all my friends were reading it, my mother never allowed me to read, read it. She only allowed a uh, baby sister's club <laughs> when I was growing up. <laughs> Any blighten baby sister's club and she drew. That's what I read lah. But then after after a while, I kind of stopped because um, the novels got sexual. Uh, so I got I got I got, got traumatized by my first adult n- novel. It was a, it was a mystery novel. I can't remember. I was set I was set one or set two. I read it and then there was a sexual scene. I was traumatized, right? Threw it away. <laughs> Not threw it away. Give it to the library. <laughs> the library was a library book. Um, then I stopped. I stopped reading fiction um, at that point. Right, but so it, uh, now, okay. Let me just. Um, there's no copyright all the slides. That I think I think it's just shared, free to be shared to everyone. Um, now, um, no, it's free to be shared. It's free to be shared. The 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 children starts out with share. My mom's alive. Alhamdulillah, dua for her. So <laughs> if you've met my mother before, Kabair, what is Kabair? Kabair is a major sin. Okay, okay. What book would you recommend for the twenty attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Aqidatul Awam. Okay, I'm I'm working on a project lah right now, um, whereby I'm trying to print it out right with the um I'm I'm doing I've done a translation of the Sharah of of the Alam into English, and I want to print it out. Right, um, I mean, it's in publish it, publish it as a, as a book. So you should dua. Inshallah, I, I plan to do it by the end of the year. <laughs> but dua lah, dua. Um, but that I would, I would, I would suggest, I would really, really recommend uh, Akhtar Awam as, as a very, very good um, source. Let me just show you all eh. I, um, very good source uh, with regards to uh, the twenty sifat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, so basically, I'm doing this lah. Right, so I'm, I'm actually working on this. Right, into, in, I'm putting into a book. Right, so it is all your akidah lah. It's everything, everything is there. Like hisab, and because this and this book, I, I recommend. Um, the shara is not my shara. It's not my shara. It's, it's from, um, uh, Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, no, I forgot the name of the, of the of the Habib. <laughs> Habib, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. His name is here. Okay, let me just put it up there. Eh. That's his name. Uh, so, um, I recommend this one. Right, this is what we learn traditionally. I'm I'm trying to make it into a book, lah. Now it's all in slides form, but I'm trying to make it into a book, inshallah. Um, so dua, we dua. But once it's in the book, I will I will inform, lah. Right, uh, for children, for children, um, there are there are there, I don't know if there are books out there on for for akida for children, but for um masjid Khalid, right, we have um produced for primary one to primary primary one to primary five, and in there is akida. As well from from Ustad Abdullah Jifri, his books, right? So teaching teaching it all the way from that point, right? So, yeah. Eh, okay, never mind. I I didn't put it there. Okay lah, but basically basically this is um inshallah inshallah I will I will I will announce lah when it is ready to be 
when it's pub- we're going to publish it, lah, inshallah. Okay, doa for us. <laughs> Okay, um, Barakallahu fikum. May Allah bless all of you in your striving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, show us truth as truth and allow us to follow it. And show us evil as evil and allow us to stay away from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, bless our teachers for pointing us to evil when we can't, when we can't see it for ourselves. Um, and give us strength to take the path of our Prophet. May Allah, may Allah reward our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greatly on our behalf for having given us this guidance um, that we so desperately need a thousand four hundred years later after his death sallallahu alayhi and may Allah bless the companions and those that came after for taking this knowledge and passing it down every generation till it has come to our hands Right, while they didn't see what we are seeing, they passed down the the defense system, you know, mashallah, the defense that we desperately need right, in our time. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Um, the link to 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 um Ustaz Abdullah's books is not available. Um, we are printing it, inshallah. It's not printed. <laughs> okay. Inshallah, by the end of the year, I need to do it by the end of the year. I have a, I have a deadline to catch, <laughs> so I will announce it once it's ready. Inshallah, inshallah, then you can buy it. Inshallah, um, some books, eh? the textbooks, the textbooks. I right? that, that that I actually feel, you know, parents can take, pick it up and teach. I right? there is the, the way. It, um, inshallah, that that we have arranged the books is that I've put in stories throughout the books, um, so that you know what story to tell at which point. So even with fake, with fiqh, I put in stories. Right? So when I teach, when I teach, when I teach wudu right, in the books, I tell stories about wudu. When I teach istinja in the book, I tell stories about istinja. Right? There are stories about everything. Right? So, so in a sense, this is just a guide there in the book. So if you follow it, you can go through it with your children you know, and teach them. And if aqida, there's a storyline also for the aqida. Uh, whereby Zaid and Zainab, you know, they are wondering about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They go through the 20 sifat. They actually go through with their father and their mother and their ustad. The 20 sifat of, um, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ustad tells stories about Allah's sifat. Good ustad, mashallah. <laughs> so the ustad in, in the book, the ustad tells stories about Allah's sifat. Right? So it's a book that the, the whole, the whole, the whole um, niyat is that it's transferable. Basically, basically, if I, 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 the book used to be that, that, that I would hold it, I would teach it, and I would put in my own stories. Uh, so now I'm trying to make it such that anyone can pick it up as a parent or a teacher and teach it. Mm. So it, it can have many different people teach it. Mm, inshallah, it's, 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 it's comprehensive, lah, basically, what I'm saying comprehensive. Insha, inshallah. May it do for us. Um, inshallah. Barakallahu fikum. Masallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Al-Fatiha. Anna Allah yuzguna manafi'an wa amalan khalasin musta'ali mudalal huda. Wa yusur bi qawm nabi Muhammad sallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Wa ila arwahi mu'alimina wa shaykhina. Wa zawil huquqi alayna wa ila hadratin nabi Muhammadin sallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Al-Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان في خسر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات توسوا بالحق وتواسوا بس سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك إشتاء لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين. Okay. Um.